it going. Before we get into this video, NQ Stats does not provide strategy. It does not provide indicators, and it does not provide investment or financial advice. What NQ Stats does do is provide statistical edge derived from historical market performance. Nothing shown in this video should be taken as advice of any kind. This video is providing a tool that could potentially be leveraged to make a trade decision. You as the trader are responsible for how you leverage and build around it, in addition to how you enter, exit, and manage any trade you decide to take. With that said, let's get into it. All right, how's it going? This video is going to be on the hour stats, uh, specifically just some tips um, on things to avoid. All right, so if you go to nqstats.com, uh, library, our stats, first one there in the drop down. This is the probability of retracement back to the hours open uh, if the prior hour high or low is swept. So the, and there'll be three things to avoid here. Um, the first thing to avoid that will give you just better trades, better setup is how far from the current hour open to the previous hour high or low point wise, you know, what, what to avoid. So if we look at a ruler here from this open, and this is the 7 a.m. hour, I don't have data because I only trade the New York session, um, but it's all the same, right? If we look at the entire 23 hour future session, that first segment sweeps, they'll always be somewhere in the, you know, like 75 to 90% probability of retracement um, before the hour, you know, before the hour ends. Uh, but if we look at this one, Specifically, uh, it's from this open to this high. It's only two points. So even if you if you get the sweep, what are you going to do? You're going to short it back down for two points of profit. I mean, it's just nothing nothing to to trade there. It's not worth the risk. Um, looking at another one, let's go back to the previous day, the full New York session here. Um, so something like this, All right? This was. Uh, May 27th at 2 p.m. The 2 p.m. hour opens, and from the 2 p.m. hour open to the prior hour high, there's only three and three quarter points. So even if you took the sweep trade back to the open, which it worked, sure, but what are you going to do? You're going to scalp three points. Uh, it's just not worth the uh, the risk. So that's that's thing number one to avoid is sweep setups where there's just no no points to trade. I typically like to see 20 to 30 to 40 points of range from the open to the prior hour sweep point. Uh, for example, like this one, where we have the 9 a.m. hour on the 27th of May. If we look at the 9 a.m. hour from the open to the prior hour high, which price is starting to trend up, so likely we're going to take that high. Um, that is 28 and a half points from the open to the high. Right, so from this open to this high is 28 and a half points. That is a lot more viable than two points. Uh, so when we get the trade up and the pivot back down to open, because if we notice that sweep happens at 918, and 918 is the first 20 minute segment, so you have a high probability of retracement back to open, uh, it doesn't really matter where you enter, right? So here's your sweep point. Let's say you have some type of entry model, um, really anywhere in there. Doesn't matter what it is, inside bar, a gap inversion, an oscillator, um, you know, you're just using uh, a static risk after a sweep. Uh, it doesn't matter, pick your entry model. Um, that's not important here. What is important is anywhere you enter in here, you're going to have viable uh, points to take back to the open. So you can get anywhere from, you know, 15 to 30 points, taking that back to the open. That's a good scalp. That's a good hour, st hour stat scalp. Uh, so that's thing one to avoid is open to prior sweep point. You know, what's the point gap? Uh, look for look for ones that are in that, you know, 20 to 40 point range. Those are going to be your best trades. Um, all right. Second thing to avoid is dual sweeps. Um, so dual, dual sweeps would be, you know, where you get the high and then the low. And again, we'll just use this hour as an example. Um, so you have the prior hour high and the prior hour low. And first you take the high, right? You take the high um, and it trades back to the open. So 
and that was within the first 20 minutes. So that that 9 a.m. takes the prior hour high within the first 20 minutes, 94% probability of reversion back to the hours open over this look back period from 2014 to 2024, 10 years of data. Uh, so 10 years of data, I know that there's a 94% probability if we sweep, if the 9 a.m. hour sweeps the prior hour high, the 8 a.m. high, within the first 20 minutes, 94% chance historically that uh, price comes back to the open. Um, now, let's say you miss that, right? You miss that, and it, let's say it happens sooner. So we'll draw out the 20, the 20 minute line. There's your 20 minute line of any hour, it doesn't matter. Let's say you get the open, sweeps the high, you, you don't take it, you miss it, and then now it comes down and it sweeps the low. And now you're gonna try to do something like that, um, which it, you know, it comes up, it takes the high, comes down, takes the low, and then it comes back to the open. The data only covers the first sweep. That's how the code I made was structured. So if you look at it, um, those sweep reversions, it only accounts for the first sweep. So whatever that first sweep is, in this case, it was the high back to the open. That is the data. There's no data for a second sweep, at least not on my website. Um, so if you're looking for you know, oh, it took the high, but then came back down, took the low. I missed the high short. I'm going to take the low long, you know, and you get somewhere long in here with the hope of taking it back to the hours open. Um, just just know that the data doesn't doesn't cover that. Uh, the data is only for that first sweep. So that's thing two to avoid. Thing one to avoid would be, uh, again, sweeps that are, have a very minimal amount of space between the hours open and the prior hour sweep point. Look for those 20 to 40 point ranges. Those will be your better trades. Thing two would be dual sweeps. So if you miss the first one, um, you can take the second one by all means, do what you want to do, but the data just doesn't, it, it, the data is not for that. The data is only for first segment sweeps or uh, only for first event sweeps, whatever the first time the sweep is. That is what the data covers. And finally, the last thing to avoid uh, would be sweep or uh, taking trades that are against the distribution of price. Um, you you don't just simply take a hour sweep just because it it, it swept liquidity, right? Uh, you have to put a little bit of context into it. While the data is the data, the data is not a there's no hundred percent probability. So those times where you get a sweep and it continues on and it never comes back to the open and you're like, why? Um, well, the, you're sh probably shorting or longing against the trend and against the distribution of price. Uh, what I mean by that is, here's a good example. So the 10 a.m. hour opens up and there is a, from open to prior or high, 22 and a half points. Uh, so price comes up, takes that, that high and then, you know, in your mind, you might be saying, okay, I'm going to level off here and uh, take this short back to open somewhere in here, uh, whatever your, your entry model is. Uh, you know, I'm going to take that short uh, back to the hour open because it has a high probability of retracement. Um, you need to understand where price is in terms of distribution and if taking that short is a good idea or not. Uh, and, and this gets into um hours uh well it gets into the data i use for my trading um i use distribution data so if you go to my website and you'll go to net change s devs just read this whole page i'm not going to get into this right now uh, how it's calculated how it's used all that um but i look for sweeps that are in line with the direction of reversion uh so I'll show you what that means and it might make a little more sense. So let's turn on um, daily distribution. All right. All right. So this might be a little challenging to see. We'll paint these lines a different color here. Um, let's just make these green so they pop out easy. Bring that opacity up 100%. All 
All right, so this top green line is the point, the 0 0.5 positive net change distribution. Um, I like to see pivots around the 0.5s and 1.0s. So when we're coming up into this high and you're, you're in your mind, you're saying, okay, reversion back to the open, there is not much tension on price in terms of the day, the session. This would only be like a 0 0.1, 0 0.15 um, deviation from the mean, which is this this yellow line that goes across the chart here. That's the session open. So as, as the day is moving and chopping around and doing whatever, here's the session open and we're really only like right here when we sweep. There's not a lot of down tension on price, right? Think of price, I think of price as a rubber band. So the farther you're stretching price away from the mean, this daily open, farther you stretch it, the more tension there is to pull it back down. The farther you stretch it down, the more tension there is to pull it back up. And I look at those pivot points around the daily distribution um, 0.5 incremental lines. So 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, etc. Now, if you drop this down also to a H4, a um, four hour candle, and we look at that data, when this opens up and it sweeps that high, right? So you get the open, you sweep the high. When it swept that high, you weren't at a pivotal H4 yet either. So if you waited for price to come up to the H4, see this green line, and then it pivots, it starts to pivot, curl over and pivot back down. Well, then you get into the new hour and price continues up. Uh, but for this particular hour, you start to rest at that H4 plus five. Um, so I wouldn't be looking to short until we get to the H4 pivot point either. And now to make it even more confusing if you're not confused already, uh, and this is just the way I trade it, right? This is my parts of my entry model. This is just some tips. If you can find these indicators from some trading view people that's made them, uh, I don't share my Ninja Trader indicators. You can make your own, the, the data, it's on the website, tells you how to build this, not from a coding perspective, but from a conceptual perspective. You can build it, you can build it in Excel. Um, but if we look at the hour, hour distributions as well, uh, let's take a look at that. So we know this, this, this sweep point is not pivoting off a daily or four hour pivot point. So let's look at the hourly pivot points. All right, coming into that high, you get the sweep and it is at the hourly pivot point. So it's at the hourly pivot point, but not at your um, H4 or your dailies. So I like to see all three align. I like to see tension on price from a H4, a daily, and an hourly perspective. Uh, if I can get all three of those to align, uh, it typically results in a good trade. Um, so let's bring the hour sweeps back up real quick. All right, so you get your hours open, you come up, you're not at a high distribution pivotal point. Remember that 0.5 daily is like way up here, the H4 is like way up here where price consolidates, and then that hourly it was. Um, now, conflicting things would be, let's say that this is, uh, you know, let's say that this is your daily, um, let's see if we can simulate a scenario here. So this is the 9 a.m. sweep, right? Sweep of the high back to the open. It worked out great here. Uh, that was a good trade, it, it worked. Uh, that would have been one to take for sure. Um, but let's say, hypothetically, that the daily 0.5, or let's say that the, the daily negative 0.5 Right, so we're down on the day. The daily negative 0.5 is like right here. And the daily negative 1.0 is like right here. Um, so now reversion on price would be up. And let's say that the open is right here. So the session open, the, the daily bar session open is way up at the top there. Um, so the daily negative 0.5, the daily negative 0.1, and you're taking this short sweep. 
So there's there's significant tension on price to pull it up, right? So from the day, you know, you come down, you know, you might do something like this. And there's significant tension to pull price up. So I'm not shorting against the distribution reversion of, of price, right? If I'm taking this short, there's tension on price to pull it back to the mean. So I, I should be favoring longs on my bias, not shorts. I wouldn't want to be taking shorts when the reversion tension is being pulled up. Um, and you can you can get some um, trading view indicators that will show you this kind of stuff. A couple people that follow my my posts have made some. Uh, if you're a trade engine trader, you know I'm sure you can find somebody to build it for you for a pretty low cost on Fiverr or Upwork, uh, just using information on my website. But you don't want to short against the distribution. Likewise, if this was reversed and we were, you know, down here, this was the open. Um, let's just say that this is the open right here, and this is the point, the point five daily, and this is the 1.0. Um, right, so we're, we're, we're something like, like this, uh, let's just build out a simulation here. So there's your daily open price has gone up throughout the day. It's coming back down and your, you get that prior hour low sweep and you want to long back to the open. Well, you're longing against tension on price. So from a daily H4 in one hour. I like to have them aligned to all three paint the picture of expectation should be down. So when all of these are um, aligned, I have reversion from a distribution perspective pointing in the same direction. It's just a, a triple confluence that I, I can expect my bias to be right. Now, whether my entry works and I did get stopped out or not, maybe I got in too early or something. That, that's irrelevant. I want the bias overall to be right. And to have a correct bias, I need to make sure my bias is in line with where price is being pulled to. Um, so that's thing number three to avoid. Uh, just to recap, thing number one to avoid would be small range from open to higher low, prior hour, higher low. Look for those 20 to 40 point ranges. Thing two would be dual sweep. So if you get the, 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 the high sweep first, and you miss it, and then it comes down and takes the low. Uh, just remember the data doesn't cover that. It's only for that whatever the first sweep is. And then thing three would be avoiding um, trades that are against the, the direction of reversion. So when you're up on the day, you're up on the hour, you're up on the H4, you want to be looking for shorts. Uh, and vice versa, when you're down on the day, the H4 and the hour, you want to be looking for longs. You don't want to be shorting, um, you know, trying to take a short when you're way down on the day already. Uh, it, it, yeah, sure, that's that's trend continuation maybe, and that might work, uh, but these hour sweeps are reversion trades. They're reversion back to the mean. They're not they're not join the trend tra uh, join the trend trades. They are reversion trades. So you're you're counter trend trading by taking these hour sweeps. Um, so if you're counter trend trading, you need to make sure that that counter trend trade is in the direction that price is being pulled, if that makes sense. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but hopefully these three tips can help you with some hour stat trades. And take care.